thank you, Lord, for truly God's grace is amazing. Grace is the central point of Christianity. In that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Grace is the center of our testimony. In that while we were struggling, the Lord saved us. Amen. Thank the Lord today. If you have your Bibles, I'm asking that you would turn with us to the sixth chapter of the Gospel of Mark. Mark chapter six. We're going to Again, reading at around verse 47. It says, And when evening was come, the ship was in the midst of the sea, he alone on the land. And he saw them toiling in rowing. For the wind was contrary unto them. And about the fourth watch of the night he cometh unto them walking on the sea. And would have passed them by. But when they saw him walking. On the sea, they supposed it had, it had been a spirit and cried out. For they all saw him and were troubled. And immediately he talked with them and said unto them, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And went up unto them to the ship and the wind ceased and they were so amazed in themselves beyond measure. In order for us to grab the full content of this passage of scripture, we have to pick up where Mark leaves off and we have to go to the book of Matthew. Matthew, the 14th chapter. And we're going to begin reading at verse 28. Now, Mark stops off by saying, the words of Jesus, be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. But Matthew picks up the rest of the story. Matthew says, and Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the 
wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore did it thou doubt? We're going to stop right there and combine the two and talk on this topic, the magnitude of the moment. The magnitude of the moment. As we said, Matthew in his gospel writing records the passage dealing with Peter walking on the water. Now of all the four gospels, Holly, Matthew is the only one who records and write in reference to Peter walking on the water. It would seem as if that Mark would be the first one to record this since Mark's gospel is based on Peter's testimony. It would seem that Peter would want Mark to put that in his gospel. Mark does not write about Peter walking on the water. Neither does Luke nor John. But Matthew in his portrait of the Christ, Matthew in his gospel writing from his angle of looking at Jesus, thought it necessary to write this passage regarding Peter walking on the water, but more than Peter walking on the water, Matthew sees the grace and love of Jesus Christ. If anybody would understand the grace and love of Jesus Christ, it would be Matthew because Matthew's job was that of a sinner and a publican and a tax collector. Matthew knew that Jesus called him while he was yet sinning. Matthew knew that Jesus looked at him in the light of who he was and called him according to who he was going to be. Can I tell you something that Jesus, when he sees you, he sees you in what you are knowing what you're going to be. It's good to know that he looked beyond what he saw. <laughs> Lord have mercy. It's good to know that he didn't stop at your attitude. He didn't stop at your anger. He didn't stop at your issues. He called you in spite of you to become you. We said in Bible study that we are God's craftsmanship that God has strategically and particularly and meticulously made us and put time into making us and God putting all that effort into us will not allow the enemy to have the final say so of who we are. The Bible says here that Matthew records Peter doing the impossible. 
Matthew records Peter doing something that no other normal man, natural man, has done. First of all, we see Jesus walking on the water. And we said last week that the Bible says, and each writer says that he wanted to pass by the ship. Lord have mercy. It said that his intentions were really not to stop in the ship. He wanted to pass by the ship. But because of the cry of a human being in the ship, Lord have mercy, he stopped in the ship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they cried out in fear and misrecognized him, he stopped and got in the boat. But the boat was not his destination. Lord have mercy. So the text tells us that when Jesus said to the disciples in the boat, be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. Now, the Bible says that when Peter heard this, Peter answered and said, Lord, if it be thou, then bid me to come unto thee on the water. Now, look at the situation. The text tells us that it was approximately Vic, three o'clock in the morning, which meant that it was dark, Holly. It meant that they were in a dark place and they see Jesus walking on the water and in their superstitious traditional thinking, they surmise that Jesus is a ghost. And fear overtook them. But you got to see something. They were in a dark place. Lord have mercy. They were in a dark situation. And I need to pin this and say that if you've ever been in a dark place, then you know it's hard to recognize Jesus in a dark place. I, I wish I had somebody with me. Yeah, it's hard to see if it's really the Lord when you're in a dark place. Yeah, their vision was hindered. Dante, their perception was hindered because they were in a dark place. I don't know about you, but yeah, yeah, sometimes life will JT put us in dark places. Lord have mercy. And in dark places, uh, it's hard to discern where God is. Yeah, not only were they in a dark place, but watch this, David Michael. They were in a dark place combined with a storm. Lord have mercy. It's one thing to be in a storm, but it's another thing to be in a dark place and in a storm at the same time. Yeah, yeah, it's troubling to be in a dark place and get bad news. Lord have mercy. You are already in a dark place, and then you get a bad report in the dark place. And from the human side of it, it's hard to see where God is. But now, watch something, church. Peter has been criticized for years and years, yeah, for getting out of the boat. Are y'all with me, church? Uh, 
But the reality is, is that the boat was in a storm, Lord Jesus, in a dark place. And Peter saw Jesus on the water. I, I wish I had somebody. I I'd rather be on the water with Jesus than to be on the boat in a dark place. But now but watch what the text says here. The text says, Peter said, when Jesus said, it's I, be not afraid. Peter said, Lord, if it be you. Y'all see the text? Uh, yeah, Matthew in the 28th verse of the 14th chapter. Peter said, Lord, if it be you, uh, then bid me to come unto thee on the water. Do y'all see the text there? Now, this word, if, Lord have mercy, it, it's a tricky word in the Greek, uh, and it's in what's called the subordinating uh, situation, uh, which means that it's linking to a pre-established fact. Lord have mercy. So the text read, not if it be you, but Lord, since it's you, Lord have mercy, be that as you. Y'all better see this. See, Peter wasn't doubtful that it was Jesus. He was saying, Lord, since it's you, Lord have mercy. Yeah, I'd rather be there, oh, y'all ain't got me, than in here. Lord, since it's you, Lord, be that it is you, Lord, be because it's you, uh, since it's you, uh, be that it is you, Jesus, uh, then I am requesting that you allow me uh, to come into the situation where you are. Lord have mercy. Y you got to see what the text is saying here. The text is saying, Lord have mercy, that Peter is requesting Holly to get out the boat. Yeah, he didn't just impulsively jump out the boat. He asked Jesus, can I come out the boat? Do y'all see that in the text, church? Uh, the Bible says that uh, Peter said, Lord, since it's you, uh, then I'm requesting uh, that I come unto thee on the water. Lord have mercy. So in the text, uh, Peter is understanding here what's going on. Uh, see, Peter is understanding uh, that uh, the winds are blowing. Are y'all with me? Uh, because uh, he sees uh, and he understands the situation uh, of the circumstances uh, because uh, the Bible says here in verse uh, yeah 28 uh, or if I could go up a little bit uh, it says uh, in verse uh, of Matthew uh, tw um, 14 uh, verse 24 it says but the ship was now in the midst of the sea tossed with waves for the wind was contrary. And Peter understood what was going on in the circumstances. Look at verse 24. It says here that uh, the winds were, or the sea, the ship was tossed with waves. That word tossed means tortured. It means that the ship uh, was getting beat up. Lord have mercy. Uh, the, well, the Bible says, uh, see, Peter understood uh, that the ship uh, was going down. Lord have mercy. Peter understood uh, that the ship uh, was being beaten. Uh, and Peter said, uh, since it's you, Lord, mm, uh, then bid me uh, to come out of the ship. Mm, and come unto you uh, on the water. Are y'all with me, church? Uh, yes, somebody need to understand here yeah, that some situations uh, that the enemy uh, will put you in uh, or some situations that you're going through uh, whereby you see uh, that the situation uh, is being beaten down. Lord have mercy. Uh, 
Yeah, there is no escaping out of the situation. Yeah, that's when it's time to say, Lord Jesus, I'm in a situation that's being beaten. I'm being beaten with the billows of life. I'm being bullied, Lord have mercy, by the wind that's opposing me. So I'm asking you, God, can I come out of this beaten, billowed, bullied situation and come on the water to you and do the impossible? See, somebody ain't ready for the impossible yet. Lord have mercy. See, the magnitude of of the moment, Lord have mercy, uh, will sometimes uh, put you in situations uh, that appear to be uh, impossible. Uh, the Bible says uh, in verse 24 that uh, of Matthew 14 uh, that uh, the ways uh, were, uh, the wind was contrary. Uh, it says that they were tossed with waves. Uh, that word waves, uh, it means a swelling. Uh, it means a billow. Uh, yeah, and the Bible says uh, that the wind uh, was contrary. Uh, the wind was bullying uh, the ship. Uh, the ship had uh, no uh, movement. Uh, yeah, because of the opposition uh, of the wind. Uh, you see, life, uh, Lord have mercy, uh, will sometimes bully you. Uh, Life uh, will sometimes uh, put you in situations, uh, Lord, where you know you're trying to go forth, uh, but opposition uh, is all around you. Uh, are y'all with me, church? Uh, yeah, life uh, will put you in situations uh, where billows, where swellings, uh, yeah, things uh, that were small initially uh, start to swell up on you. Uh, Anybody ever been in a situation uh, and you ask yourself, uh, how did this get so big? Uh, how did this get out of hand like this? Uh, yeah, how did this situation uh, get out of control? Uh, that's what was happening here, Holly. The billows were tossing uh, the ship. Are y'all with me? Uh, and the ship uh, was being uh, bullied uh, by the contrary of the wind. Uh, and Peter understood the circumstances, uh, but Peter saw Jesus uh, on the water, uh, and Peter determined uh, and made a decision uh, and requested of Jesus uh, that Jesus would allow Peter to come out of the boat uh, and walk on the water with him. Are y'all with me, church? Uh, see, Peter understood his situation. He understood what was going on around him. Uh, he understood uh, that if I stay where I am, Lord have mercy, I wish I had somebody. If I stay in this situation, uh, yeah, based upon what I see, Lord have mercy, if I stay here, if I don't make a move, uh, if I don't make a decision, uh, if I don't make a change in my life, uh, this boat I'm in is going down. I wish I had somebody uh, who understood uh, that it requires uh, an understanding of your situation uh, before you can make a move out of your situation. Yeah, you got to understand. Uh, you got to look around and say, uh, this ain't good for me. Lord have mercy. You got to look around uh, and see the mentality uh, of those that are around you. Uh, see, nobody uh, in the boat uh, requested to get out but Peter. Uh, I'm going to stay right there. Nobody in the boat uh, saw a need to get out uh, but Peter. See, for too long, we've been blasting Peter for getting out of the boat. Uh, but it wasn't arrogance. Uh, it wasn't impulsiveness. Uh, it was a humble request uh, to Jesus, uh, Lord, since I see it's you, uh, can I come out of my situation? Lord, have mercy. I, I, I'm going to put that right there. Lord, uh, since it's you, uh, can I come out of this misery? Uh, 
Lord senses you. Uh, can I come out of this sickness? Uh, Lord senses you. Uh, can I come out of, uh, yeah, this hardship? Uh, you know, a lot of folk uh, will just stay in it uh, until it goes down. Uh, but sometimes uh, you got to recognize uh, when uh, to ask Jesus, uh, can I come out of this uh, and come to you? But see, coming to Jesus, uh, Peter understood the situation, uh, but he underestimated, uh, yeah, the moment. Uh, I wish I had somebody here. See, he understood uh, that he had to get out of the boat. Uh, Peter knew, Holly, uh, that the wind was blowing. Uh, Peter knew uh, that they were in a storm, uh, but Peter underestimated uh, the situation. Uh, and the Bible says uh, that when Peter got out of the boat, uh, he walked to Jesus, uh, but he underestimated uh, the strength of the opposition. Are y'all with me? He missed the magnitude uh, of his moment. See, the reality is, church, uh, is that a lot of times uh, we find ourselves, uh, yeah, getting into stuff, uh, but underestimating uh, the magnitude of it. Uh, and when we underestimate the magnitude of it, we like Peter, Lord have mercy, give up. Uh, we like Peter fail. Uh, we like Peter become unsuccessful uh, because uh, things get too hard. Uh, yeah, we become unsuccessful uh, because we knew things were going to be hard, but I didn't know it was going to be this hard. Uh, I knew it was going to be a struggle, uh, but I didn't know it would be like this. Uh, I knew that it would be heartache and pain, uh, but I didn't realize uh, it would be like this. Uh, see, Peter understood, uh, but he underestimated uh, the moment uh, because the moment will always be bigger than you. I wish I had somebody. Uh, see, the reason a lot of us right now are still in the boat because uh, we are afraid, first of all, of change. We are afraid uh, of failure. And see, the reality is you got to see something here. There were other disciples and other people in the boat that when Peter made his request, you got to understand that his reputation was on the line. Because Peter making the request to walk on the water says that others were watching uh, what he was doing. And others watching what he was doing, uh, yeah, just by default, uh, yeah, became somebody who did not understand what he was doing. See, the problem with a lot of us is that we're stuck in complacency. We're stuck in trying to please the crowd. We're stuck in trying to go along with what's been happening. We're stuck with the status quo. But in the text here, Peter did not accept the status quo. And Peter said, well, no one in my neighborhood has graduated from high school, but I'm going to do it. Peter says, no one in my family has gotten a degree, so I'm going to do it. Peter said, no one around me has started a business, so I'm going to do it. Peter says, I'm going to stretch out and come out of my comfort zone and put myself in a situation where I'm seen by everybody. So my success and my failure is seen by everybody. Can I tell somebody something about the magnitude of the moment? When the moment comes, you can't be afraid of what people are going to say. When the moment comes, y'all better hear what I'm saying. You can't get stuck on ideology. When the moment comes, you can't fear what has happened in the past. When the moment comes, you got to be willing and able to step out. You got to be willing to go beyond your fears, go beyond your apprehensions, go beyond your consciousness, and know that Jesus is calling you to a greater work, and know that Jesus is calling you to a greater purpose. See, here's the thing, is that no 
other person had walked on water before. So Peter wanted to be the first to do something. Am I talking to somebody? See, the thing is that fear will hold you back. Fear will keep you in the boat. Fear will keep you in the mundane. Fear will keep you surrounded by people who are talking the same stuff that you are talking. People who said one of these days we're going to do it. See, fear will keep you around people with just good ideas but no action. Come on, talk to somebody. But see, Peter says that in spite of, yeah, my brothers here, I love y'all brother. I love y'all brothers on the boat, but I see an opportunity here. I see a moment that's coming into my life. And can I tell you something about the moment? You only get one of them. Lord have mercy. And when that moment come, it's up to the individual to recognize that it's time for me to get out of this stuff. See, because once that moment pass, then it's all over. Can I tell you something here? See, David had a moment in front of Goliath, and David took advantage of that moment. Elijah had a moment on Mount Carmel, and Elijah took advantage of that moment. Can I tell somebody that when your moment come, it's going to be a big moment. It's going to be a magnitude of a moment, but fear cannot hinder your moment. Watch the text. See, Peter underestimated, uh, yeah, his opposition. Yeah, the text says uh, that the wind became boisterous. Are y'all with me? The, the, and what the text is saying is that when he saw, let me go back. Uh, the Bible says when Peter saw, uh, in verse 30, uh, yeah, he says, and when he saw the wind boisterous. In other words, the wind was already boisterous, uh, and that word means strong. The wind was strong, uh, yeah, but when Peter realized how strong the opposition was, Lord have mercy, when Peter realized how hard it was going to be, then that's when he took his eyes off of Jesus. When he came to the conclusion, uh, yeah, that this situation, this moment is bigger than me. When he came to the conclusion uh, that uh, my intellect cannot, uh, yeah, handle the magnitude of this moment. Uh, when he came to the conclusion uh, that uh, my background uh, cannot handle the magnitude of this moment. Uh, when he came to the conclusion, uh, Lord, that my education uh, can't handle the magnitude of this moment. Uh, when he came to the conclusion uh, that I don't have enough connections uh, to handle this moment. Uh, when he came to the conclusion, y'all better catch me, uh, that my family generational issues uh, are not allowing me to handle this moment. Uh, when it hit Peter that the moment was bigger than him uh, and he had underestimated uh, the power of the moment, uh, the Bible says uh, that Peter, Lord have mercy, started to sink. Can I tell you something up in here? That the magnitude of your moment have to be met with the mightiness of God. Oh, I wish I had somebody. Y'all don't, don't want me to preach. Uh, yeah, the magnitude of your moment must be met uh, with the mightiness of God. See, the Bible says that uh, Peter understood the situation. He underestimated the situation. And in the situation, Peter became an underachiever because watch what the text says here the bible says uh, but when he saw the wind boisterous he was afraid and beginning to sink now watch the text here church uh, peter became afraid when he realized what he was dealing with are y'all with me see a lot of us lord have mercy we get into stuff lord have mercy and once we get into it uh, and realize what we've uh, or undertaken, realizing the project that we have yet yeah, endeavored uh, and realize the strength of it, uh, then a lot of us start to sink. Uh, the reason uh, there aren't as many uh, great lawyers and great doctors and great nurses and 
great authors and great musicians and the reason there aren't a lot of great uh, in the world uh, is because a lot of people who could be great uh, who God has made to be great, uh, who God has created, y'all don't want me to preach, uh, who God has created to be great, uh, you find yourself uh, in situations uh, whereby uh, the moment overshadows, uh, yeah, your will uh, to be great. Uh, see, Peter got afraid when he realized the magnitude uh, of the moment. Uh, a lot of us want uh, the moment, uh, but we're afraid of what comes with the moment. You see, what comes with the moment uh, is you being talked about. What comes with the moment uh, is you being misunderstood. Uh, what comes with the moment uh, is for watching you uh, and waiting on you to fail. Uh, what comes with the moment uh, is people in your neighborhood and your family who's throwing negativity at you uh, when you're trying to be great. Uh, you want to be healed, uh, but you're around folk who like sickness. Uh, Y'all ain't hear that. Uh, see, a lot of folk like sickness. Uh, yeah, a lot of folk get attention from sickness. Uh, you want to be healed, uh, but you're around people uh, who love to be sick. Uh, Lord have mercy. Uh, you want, uh, Lord, to be great, uh, but you're around people uh, who want mediocrity. Uh, you want to be different. Uh, but you're around people uh, who are complacent uh, in their, Lord have mercy, mentalities. Uh, but Peter underestimated, underachieved, uh, but in his underachievement, uh, the Bible says uh, that Peter prayed to Jesus. Can I tell you something about the magnitude of the moment? The magnitude of the moment will, will bring you to two things, pride or prayer. Oh, y'all ain't got that. The magnitude of the moment will bring you to pride of prayer because the moment is always bigger than you. So since the moment is bigger than you, uh, then some of us will just stay there and sink without praying because we're too prideful uh, to call on Jesus uh, when we are sinking. See, the most important element in this uh, is the fact that Peter walked on the water, but even more importantly is when Peter realized he was failing, uh, he yeah, moved his pride out the way and prayed to Jesus. Are y'all with me? See, a lot of us will just go down because we got too much pride. Yeah, I, I, I said I was going to do this, and I'm going to do it, and I, now, if I'm failing, oh, well, I'm going to keep on pushing, and I'm going to keep on striving, and we do everything uh, but call upon the name of Jesus. But Peter, in his problem, removed his pride and prayed. Can I say that one more time? Peter, in his problem, removed his pride and prayed. I, I think somebody needs to hear that. <laughs> yeah. In your problem, remove your pride and pray. Lord have mercy. Because pride goes before a fall. Peter is failing, church, and he removes his pride and he prays to Jesus. Now, here's the thing, uh, is that uh, he's walking uh, because Jesus commanded him to do it. That word come, Erkamai, in verse 29 of Matthew 14, uh, is in the imperative mood, uh, which means that Jesus gives him a command, yeah, Lord have mercy, to come out of the ship. See, a lot of folk, Lord have mercy, uh, yeah, you're just comfortable in your ship. Even though you know things ain't right in your ship, you know your finances are not right, you know your mentality is not right, you know your relationships are not right, yeah, you know the ship is being beaten, bullied, and billowed, but yet a lot of folk are just stay right there, 
gloom. You'll stay right there depressed. You'll stay right there complaining. You'll stay right there angry. You'll stay right there miserable. But in the reality is, is that when you come out of your ship and understand that Jesus commanded Peter to come walk on the water, but when Peter failed, yeah, because the moment was bigger than him, everything that Jesus command you to do will always be bigger than you. Uh, every mission that the Lord puts you on uh, will always be bigger than you. Uh, every assignment uh, that the Lord gives you uh, will always be bigger than you. Uh, every ministry uh, that the Lord gives you uh, will always be bigger than you. Uh, but what do you do when you realize that I have underestimated my situation? You do like Peter, you call upon Jesus. And the Bible says that Peter, in the magnitude of his moment, started to sink. And the Bible says that immediately Jesus stretched forth his hands and caught him. Now watch something here, church. What you don't see in the text, Mitch, is Jesus reprimanding Peter for walking on the water. You don't see Jesus Lord have mercy, uh, chastising Peter for doing something great. You don't see Jesus uh, fussing at Peter for getting out of the boat. So we can stop giving Peter a bad time for getting out of the boat because uh, if it was wrong for him to get out of the boat, Right here, Jesus would have told him, you should have stayed where you are. See, the Lord, sometimes, Lord have mercy, will tell you uh, it's good to get out of that sinking ship. Lord have mercy. It's good uh, to do something uh, that your ancestors have not done. It's good uh, to do something uh, that your culture is not doing. Uh, and I need to put a pin right here and say uh, that our thinking uh, is so cultural driven. And when we learn uh, that our thinking uh, has to be uh, Christotelic uh, other than uh, my culture, that's when the Lord can bless you uh, with an open eye. Jesus says to Peter here in the text, uh, O thou of little faith, why did you doubt? Let me paraphrase what Jesus was saying to Peter. Jesus said uh, to Peter, you could have uh, done something greater if you just didn't doubt. Jesus says uh, to Peter that you could have walked uh, a little farther on the water only if you didn't doubt. See, a lot of times uh, we try to rely on our own understanding. And the Bible says that we are to trust in the Lord with all of our hearts and Lean not into our own understanding. And then he says, uh, but in all ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct our path. Jesus says to Peter that, Peter, you underestimated your situation, and I understand that uh, but uh faith uh, will uh, make the difference he says uh, 
O thou of little faith, uh, wherefore did you doubt? Uh, and uh, he said uh, that uh, if you uh, just believe uh, that God is uh, all power, and uh, if you just believe that uh, when you said, uh, mm, save me, uh, that uh, all you had to do uh, was call uh, upon his name. Uh, God will uh, take care of you uh, when uh, the moment uh, becomes uh, bigger than you, uh, then you got to know uh, that God uh, is getting ready to take you uh, to the next level. Uh, God will, uh, oh yeah, Lord, uh, take you uh, to uh, the next level, uh, but uh, he said uh, you have to believe uh, in his power. Now, I don't know uh, how many steps uh, Peter made uh, on the water, uh, but I do know uh, that Peter did uh, the impossible. I don't know, uh, uh, Lord, uh, if he took uh, six steps. Uh, it doesn't matter. The Bible says uh, that Peter parried potato. Uh, that meant uh, he put one foot uh, in front of another. Uh, and uh, he walked on uh, a surfaceless uh, environment. Uh, can I tell you something? Uh, you need uh, a surface uh, to put your feet uh, on. Uh, but I need to tell you that sometimes uh, there is uh, no surface. <laughs> I wish I had somebody. Sometimes uh, there is uh, nothing uh, to put your foot down uh, upon. Uh, the Bible says uh, that Peter, he walked uh, on the water to Jesus. Uh, but uh, when Peter saw, oh yeah, Lord. Uh, the magnitude of the moment, uh, he became fearful uh, and called uh, upon uh, the name of Jesus. Uh, God's got uh, some moments uh, planned out uh, for you. Uh, God's got uh, some things uh, in store for you. Uh, the Bible says uh, that I have not seen, uh, yeah, have not heard, uh, nor has it entered in uh, to mankind uh, the things uh, that God uh, has uh, in store. Uh, you see, uh, God's got uh, a moment uh, that's waiting uh, for you uh, and that moment uh, will propel you uh, into the next dimension uh, of greatness uh, but when the moment comes uh, like Peter moment came uh, you gotta keep your eye uh, on the one uh, who told you uh, to get into uh, the situation uh, when the moment comes uh, you got to uh, keep your eyes uh, 
on Jesus. There is a moment coming in your life when God going to tell you to step out of the boat. There's a time in your life when the Lord will say, come on and do something great. You've been in this situation too long. You've been down too long. You've been struggling too long. See, God made you to be great. God made you to be awesome. God made you to be somebody. I heard somebody say, Oh, Lord, that uh, all that I am, Christ made me. All that I'm going to be, Christ will make me. I heard somebody say, I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody who can save anybody. Oh, Lordy, your moment is here right now. The Lord is saying, this is your moment. You can't let your past hinder your moment. You can't let your fears hinder your moment. You can't allow your circumstances to hinder your moment. When the Lord calls, somebody said, when he calls, I will answer. When the Lord said, come, I will come. If the Lord say go, I will go. If the Lord say stop, I will stop. Yeah, Lord, yeah. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Oh, Lord, look at old Peter. Yeah, old Peter is walking on the water. Old Peter is doing something that nobody else has done. Peter is performing something different in his life. I need to tell you it's time for you to start doing something great for the Lord. You've been down in 2020 quarantine. You've been down worrying, but I need to tell you that God, he never failed. God is still on his throne. God is still amazing. God is still powerful. Anybody know about my God? Anybody <laughs> know about my Savior? You see, he walked on the water, but he said to us that you shall do greater works. If I walked on the water, you too can walk on the water. He's telling us that there's power in faith. There's power in following Jesus. Your moment, your moment, your moment, your moment is right here. Trust in the Lord. Watch Jesus, how he handled his moment. He said, oh, Lord, I came to die and watch how he handled his moment. The Bible says, oh Lord, that as he sat around the table, he said, I'm exceedingly sorrowful. He went to Gethsemane where he prayed. But watch his moment. He said, Lord, oh Father, if it be thy will, let this cup 
luck is cup pass me, but nevertheless, nevertheless, I'm in my moment now. Nevertheless, this is my moment, not my will, but thine will. Watch it, he came to die. What greater love? than this, uh, that a man will lay down uh, his life for a friend. Uh, say, G! Uh, 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 yeah, Lord, uh, and he all right. Uh, watch him, uh, he took his moment. <coughs> he went from judgment hall uh, to judgment hall, uh, but stayed in his moment. Uh, Lord, he, uh, when the pair of the crowd said, uh, crucify him, uh, he stayed in his moment. Uh, yeah, when they drug him uh, from judgment hall uh, to judgment hall, uh, he stayed in his moment. Uh, when they marched him up uh, Calvary's mountain, uh, he stayed in his moment. Uh, when they put nails uh, in his hand, uh, he stayed in his moment. Uh, when they put nails uh, in his feet, uh, he stayed in his moment. Uh, when they trumped him uh, in the hole of his cross, uh, he stayed in his moment. Uh, I heard him, David, um, on the cross singing the blues. Uh, Eloi, 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 Sebastian, I, uh, which is to say, my God, oh, 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 my God. Why have thou forsaken me? But the Bible says he stayed in his moment because his moment was here. He dropped his head in the locks of his shoulder and he died. He died. He died. He died. He died. Oh, he died. Somebody said, the soldier said, surely, hey, Surely, this must be uh, the Son of God. He died. He died. Stayed in his moment. Uh, went down uh, into a fire tomb. Uh, where he went down to hell. Uh, preached to the captives. Uh, but on Sunday morning, uh, look at his moment. Uh, he got up. Uh, he got up. Uh, he got up. Uh, with, oh, oh, he got up. Uh, he rose, he rose, oh yeah, he went back to glory, when he sat down at the right hand and said, whenever you need me, just call upon me, when the moment gets too big, I'll be there to balance it, when the moment get out of hand, I'll be there to straighten it out, when the moment cause you grief and pain, I'll be there to work it out. Say, yeah, he's a healer, he's a deliverer. Oh! Oh, yeah, Lord, and he all right, and he all right. Say, yeah, say, yeah, say, yeah. Sometimes my moment gets too big. Sometimes my moment make me cry. Sometimes my moment make me fearful. Sometimes my moment make me angry. I tell the Lord, oh Lord, bridle my tongue, control my mind, give me peace in my soul. My moment is too big for me. I need I need anybody need the Lord? Say yeah, say yes, say yes, Lord. Oh, Say yeah. Come on, give the Lord a praise. Give the Lord a praise. He's worthy. He's worthy. The magnitude of the moment. The moment is bigger than you. But your greatness is predicated 
Are you understanding how big this moment is? Knowing that when Jesus tells you to come on, that you walk and do the impossible. Come on, he says, to your business. Come on to your degree. Come on to stability in your family. Come on to financial stability. He says, come on. It's going to require something on us. And the opposition will be great. I was talking to my sister the other day about first-time homeowners. And sometimes you got to go through some stuff. You got to go through a lot of procedures. Got to go through a lot of paperwork, a lot of credit repair, a lot of stuff. You got to sacrifice buying a lot of stuff. But in order to become that homeowner and to do something great and start your investment plan in life, it requires work. The moment will be bigger than you. But Jesus, he'll balance the moment for you. He'll balance the moment. Father, we thank you. We glorify you. We magnify you. We lift you up. Because, dear God, you are worthy to be praised. Now, God, in Jesus' name, as we step forth out of some boats that we've been in, As we step forth into some situations. Come on, Vic, grab that mic. As we step forth into some challenges. Remember, Jesus is right there on the water with you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Remember that Jesus commanded you to come into this situation. Hallelujah. Tell them thank you, church. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He's worthy. Come on, while you're making up your mind, oh, thank while you're praying, thank you, send us a comment. Lord, oh, Pastor, I'm in my moment now. It's bigger than me. You can thank handle Lord. it. Ooh. Jesus, I'm on this water. You commanded me to, to be in this situation. You, but now, Lord, is bigger. I need you. Hallelujah. Oh, you've been Come on, somebody, tell the Lord thank you. So tell him thank you. Come on, while you're yet where you are, go ahead and tell him thank you. That's a comment. I just want to thank Pastor, I need help. You, you go down your inbox, send a private message. Pastor, I need help. Oh, just we're reaching out to you now. We're reaching thank out. Because oh, we know. Oh, you know. There's some ships you're in. That's being bullied. You it's been beaten. Lord, it's been billowed. But Jesus, Lord, thank you, Lord. Thank if you have not accepted Jesus Christ, you, 
as your Savior. He died for your sins when you were a sinner. He loves you when you didn't even love him. I invite you to accept the love of Jesus Christ, the grace of Jesus Christ, the love of our Savior. What greater love when we betrayed him, he still loved us. When we allow the enemy to infiltrate our minds with junk, he still loves us. And he says, this love is displayed when we love one another. Thank you, Lord. And now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest rule and abide with all of us now henceforth and forevermore. Every heart say amen and amen.